Today, I get to enjoy one of the best rewards of gardening, and that is the eating. I grew quite a variety of winter squash and pumpkins this year, and some of them needed to cure for a few months to reach their optimal flavor. Well, it's been about two months now, and today I'm going to bake one of each of the varieties of squash and pumpkins I grew this year and do a taste testing. So let's take a look at the varieties that are in the taste test today. So I've got Autumn Frost, this is Honey Baby Butternut. This is On On, it's a Japanese pumpkin. This is Seminole Pumpkin. This is our Grandma Bensman's Heirloom Pumpkin. This is Center Cut, it's a tromboncino type squash. And lastly, Pastilla Champagne. This is an heirloom winter squash. So to make the taste testing fair, I prepped these all the same way. Basically split them in half, scooped out the seeds, and baked them in the oven at 350 till they were tender enough to stab with a fork. Let's dig in. So I'm starting off with Autumn Frost. You can see here, that's what it looks like after it's baked. Very, very sweet, very rich, but an almost floral aftertaste to that one. High moisture to that flesh quality and silky smooth. There's no strings at all to that. And next we, <laughs> well, next, We've got Seminole, and this one is so soft, I can barely pick these up and flip them over without them falling apart. Seems to be a lot of moisture content in that one too. That one tastes like pumpkin, truly like unsweetened pumpkin pie filling. Now there's not a lot of sugar there. There is very high moisture content in that flesh, but I think that would make really good pumpkin pie. Next is this little honey baby. This is like a little personal sized butternut squash. And I love these, but they don't store super well. Not like a normal butternut at any rate. Mm. But that is so sweet. So smooth, very, very creamy. You would not have to add any sweetener to that. No stringiness at all. That would be delightful for custard or baked goods or any kind of sweet application. I think you'd, it'd be hard to use this in a savory pumpkin recipe. Now I've got the pastilla champagne, which I'm really curious about. You can see this monster took up my whole baking sheet. I have not tried these yet. My dad is claiming this is one of the best winter squash he's ever eaten. We will see. And I can tell you just from cooking this, there was a lot of liquid that came out of this. It was floating on the baking sheet when I pulled it out of the oven. Hmm. <laughs> I do not like that. Ugh. So I had a thought with the pastilla champagne that perhaps I had got one of the squash that were not quite mature by the time harvest came, because it was a very, very long season variety. And we had frost before all of the squash had fully ripened. So I cut up another one, baked it, and I'm going to give it another shot and see if this one's any better. Nope. <laughs> it's really strange because the name literally translates to champagne candy. <laughs> so I was expecting something a little sweeter. I think this would be good in a more savory dish because there's very little sweetness here. And there's a chance that this still was not at peak maturity. So I've not fully given up on this one. And I would love to hear from someone with a super long growing season who has tried this variety. If you're taste experience has been any different. In the meantime, I'm going to be dubious about further flavor assessments from my father. So here I've also got the center cut tromboncino. And with this one, I just cut up sections of the neck and roasted them. Um, you can see here the bottom part where the seeds are. There just wasn't going to be a whole lot of flesh there once I scooped out the seeds. So I didn't bother with baking those. So we will give the neck part a try. And this one is significantly lighter in color than the other squash, if you can tell. Hmm. It's a little stringier than 
some of these other varieties. It seems to have a very high moisture content. But this one too, I think would be really tasty in a more savory application. So if you were doing something like a spiced squash soup or something along those lines, I think this would be a really promising choice. And what's interesting about this center cut is it, as I mentioned, it's a trombuccino type, so it can be harvested immature and used as you would like a summer squash or a zucchini, or you can let it mature to this golden bronze color and use it as a winter squash. And it is massively productive. This, this plant like took over the world this past summer. One other thing I will say about this variety, I tried some of these right after picking before they had had a chance to cure and mature for a while. And <laughs> I was really repulsed by the flavor and they've improved significantly since sitting in storage for a couple of months. Next, I've got on on Japanese pumpkin. Now, for those of you who like to try new varieties, you may have to wait a year or two before this one is readily available on the market. So I am a trial seed manager for vegetables, annual flowers and herbs, which means that sometimes I am growing and evaluating new varieties several years before they hit the market. And that is the case with this pumpkin. I will say I tried this one already. This is one of the very first ones I baked out of the garden and it is so good. I would be shocked if it is not widely available within a couple of years. Now it has this really beautiful dark orange flesh. Mm. And like many Japanese pumpkins, it has this very unique dense texture. So much less water content than many of the other squash and pumpkins, but very smooth, completely stringless and almost like velvety in texture. It's really interesting. And it is sweet. It has very high sugars, but not overwhelmingly so. And combined with that sweetness is this almost like chestnutty, deep, really like a richness of flavor. And I've made some pumpkin custards and pumpkin pies with this one. And <laughs> honestly, the only pumpkin or squash I've ever had that has rivaled this one is our Grandma Bensman's pumpkin, which I'll talk about in a minute. But overall, this variety is definitely one of my taste favorites. And last but not least is the Grandma Bensman's pumpkin. Now this is one of my personal favorites. It's perfectly sweet, very dense, very rich flesh. And Grandma Bensman's makes some of the best pumpkin pies I have ever had. Now the story behind this one is a lot of fun. The seed for this pumpkin was given to my sister by her grandmother-in-law. And they were some seeds that she had gotten from a faith healer in Indiana somewhere and had kept growing ever since. And I wish I could track down the history of this before Grandma Bensman got a hold of the seeds, but it's incredibly well adapted to our area. Very productive, very early maturing. Stores, we've had them store for a year with no loss of quality. And as I mentioned, amazing flavor and texture. So my sister grows these every year and saves the seed and it will be one that we will continue to grow for years and years and years to come and hopefully pass on to our children and, and anyone who wants to grow the seed. But as I mentioned, this one and the Japanese pumpkin are definitely my favorites this year for a fantastic pumpkin pie. So now I know which delicious pumpkins and squash I will definitely be growing again <laughs> and which I will not be. Be sure to drop a line in the comments below. What is your all time flavor favorite pumpkin or winter squash? And be sure to subscribe to my channel, Growfully with Jenna, for more tips on gardening, variety recommendations, and of course, taste test. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.